happy Thanksgiving. Welcome to Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Fort Capel, Saskatchewan, the congregation of the Lutheran Church Canada. We're glad to have you with us today, and we pray that this service will be a blessing to you and yours. The peace of the Lord be with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me, and answer me. Evening, morning, and noon. I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. You will never let the righteous fall. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the 19th Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah chapter 25. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. He will swallow up for our own mountain, the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him, that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Philippians, chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Again, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son, and sent his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding feast, but they would not come. Again, he sent other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention and went on, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. The king was angry, and sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding feast is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, to the main roads, and invite to the wedding feast as many as you find. And those servants went out to, into the roads and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to look at the guests, he saw there was a man who had no wedding garment. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and cast him into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the word of the Lord. Grace, 
mercy, and peace be to you, from God our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. There's something about a feast that brings joy to the heart. We use them to mark all sorts of occasions that allow us to gather together with friends and family. We feast on holy days like Christmas and Easter. We feast on days like today or tomorrow when we give thanks to God for the abundance that he has provided through the harvest. And of course, we feast on special occasions like weddings. And our feasts have nothing on those that used to happen in the days of Jesus Christ our Lord. A wedding feast would normally last at least one day. The better off one was, the longer the feast would be. A royal wedding feast could last many days. And in our gospel reading today, we hear the Lord compare the kingdom of heaven to a, royal, a king holding a wedding feast for his son, a royal wedding with a royal feast. The parable begins with the king summoning those who he had already invited. We can imagine that this would have been quite the feast. It is a royal feast, after all. A royal feast in honor of the wedding of a beloved son. Such a great occasion. One that fills the heart of the king with joy, so that he wants to celebrate with others. And it is a great feast. When the first summons is ignored, the king sends his servants yet again with a message that describes the greatness of the feast. See, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. Fresh and abundant food, rich food. Not only oxen, but the fattened calves have also been slaughtered for the feast. The feast is really a description of the Lord's great salvation, of eternal life in the new heavens and the new earth in his presence which in the Revelation of John is described as the wedding feast of the Lamb and his kingdom. It is the same feast that Isaiah describes, uh, which the Lord of hosts, that is the Lord of armies, becomes the host of a great feast, a feast of rich foods, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich foods full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. Why would anyone reject such an invitation? Christ continues the parable, saying, They paid no attention and went off, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. While this specifically addresses the leaders of Israel at the time of Christ, just like the last two parables that we've heard, this also applies to our day as well. How many times have we heard an unbeliever pay no attention to the great feast, or write it off, or act indifferent to it? Seeing Christ merely as one of many ways to get to heaven, or the church as something that, while it is important, there are other things that are more important. It can come later when there's more time. In the parable, those invited go to their farm, to their business, those things that are important, but which pale in comparison to the feast. But we must also remember, beloved, that in this parable, these actions are not those of people that had nothing to do with the feast, but to those who were already invited beforehand. And so we must always be watchful, be vigilant, and pray that the Lord would preserve us from treating our great salvation that he has given to us with indifference, of brushing aside the Lord's invitation, insulting our good and gracious God by putting other things first, like our business, our hobbies, sports, leisure, and even friends and family. To put these things before the Lord's invitation is to put them, in fact, before the Lord, and it makes them out to be our gods rather than gifts from the only true God. Let us not fall into the trap of despising preaching or his word, but rather gladly hear and learn it, gathering together as his people. For the Lord, just as the king in the parable, is earnestly desiring to fill his hall 
for the marriage feast of his son. And he does so freely. See the desire of the king to celebrate the wedding of his son. The desire of our Lord and God, our Father in heaven, to bring people from all nations to himself to celebrate the marriage feast of his son. For he says to his servants, Go therefore to the main roads, and invite to the wedding feast as many as you find. And the servants went out to the roads and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. The king in the parable has more than enough means to supply a full banquet hall. And he desires to fill the wedding hall with all that can be found, so that they may feast with him. And likewise, the Lord, the king of the universe, has more than enough for us. As it says in Isaiah, this feast is one for all people. And we are those who have been gathered to him in this way, good and bad. There was no respect to persons when we were gathered, no looking at who we were or where we've come from or what we've done beforehand, because the Lord earnestly desires us to be with him. As for the feast, the Lord says in the Psalms, cattle a thousand hills are mine. He is the one whose possession is the entire earth, and at whose word the earth brings forth its abundance. He will fill his hall with guests, no matter how many, how late they have been invited, and he will provide for them. And he does provide everything in this. It's no potluck. There is nothing we need to bring to him, nor can, in this great feast of salvation. In ourselves, we have nothing worthy to bring. And so, he, out of his grace and goodness and riches, provides everything. Just as in the parable, the king provided all, even the wedding garment for the guests, so that all would be splendidly arrayed. This feast is one which lasts in eternity, an eternal feast of salvation where we will have life and joy. For his son, in whose honor we feast, for whose sake we have been saved, has defeated death by his death on the cross. So that on the last day when he comes again, you will see that he has swallowed up the covering that has been cast over all peoples, the veil spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. And so, let us trust in him, for he has spoken. He will do it. Even now, so that we may trust in him, while we are still in the very midst of death in this life, he gives us a foretaste of the feast to come, that we may have faith in him and an assurance for our hope. For in holy baptism he has given to us the wedding garments of righteousness of his Son. As Isaiah in another place prophesied, so the Lord has done to you. He has clothed you with garments of salvation. He has covered you in robes of righteousness, a righteousness that is not of your own, but Christ's, which by faith God credits to you. In absolution, he uses his servants to speak again to you the invitation to the feast, to forgive you all of your sins so that you may have assurance of your place in the feast, to reassure you that you have been invited and that the Lord does indeed desire to have you there, that he has forgiven you all of your sins and calls you his guest and his friend for his son's sake. And so he sanctifies you, making you holy as we near the day of the Lord. In the Lord's Supper, he gives to us a foretaste of the feast while we feed upon the Lamb of God who is slain upon the altar of the cross for us. You receive the very body and blood of the Lord which was offered for you. And since in this foretaste we receive forgiveness, life, and salvation, and union with Christ as he dwells in us, how much greater will the feast to come be when we are at the wedding feast of the Lamb, which inaugurates the kingdom of heaven? And so, brothers and sisters, let us not be as the guest who was found without a garment when the king came to see and enjoy the company of his guests. For like the guests in the wedding hall of the parable, 
we likewise can choose to reject the largesse of our king. The guest in the parable rejected the gift of the wedding garment. He saw no need for it. Maybe he thought his own clothes were good enough. Maybe he thought he was offering the king a kindness by not using the garment provided so that someone else could have it. We don't know, for rightly he couldn't give an answer for rejecting the goodness and graciousness of the king when he asked, before being thrown bound hand and foot into the outer darkness. May the Lord preserve us from this. May he keep us from presumptuous sins. Let us not reject the Lord's gifts, brothers and sisters, that we can find our own way, thinking that we can find our own way other than the way that he has provided. Let us not reject his commands and replace them with our own, for it is dangerous to reject his gifts that he has given us and continue to give us day in and day out. Our Lord's goodness is boundless. His hands are filled with righteousness and blessings which he holds out to us, which he desires for us to partake in. He freely and liberally gives to us salvation, forgiveness, and life, so that we may with him be feasting for eternity. He earnestly desires our presence and so continually strengthens us by his word, spirit, and sacraments that we may humbly receive the gifts that he loves to give. You have been invited here, brothers and sisters, to this wedding hall, the church. And not only have you been invited, but you have been brought here by his servants at his command. You have received the blood-washed wedding garment of salvation and righteousness. And you have tasted and seen that the Lord is good when he has fed you in the Holy Supper as a foretaste of the feast to come. And so let us rejoice in him and give thanks to him who has brought us to his banquet hall so that we may feast with him at the great wedding feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 